From the first natural glass found millions of years ago to the varied output of the glassmaker's furnace today is the saga of glass. Of the three members of the flat glass family, plate glass, window glass, and roll glass, we are concerned with roll glass. Sometimes rough, sometimes smooth, mostly translucent rather than transparent, glass with a job to do. The primary function of rolled glass, diffusion, decoration, protection, and heat absorption. To fulfill these many needs, a wide variety of glass has been designed and engineered. The ability of rolled glass to admit light to the interior of the room, as well as offering privacy, has led to its use in many modern offices and homes. With the many patterns now available, the decorative possibilities are unlimited. As glass emerges from the spout of this furnace, it is molten enough to flow. But in a matter of inches, it's pulled through embossing rollers that make their mark on this glass to add specific functions to all its other characteristics. It is non-combustible, it cannot burn, since it was born in a furnace. After slow cooling, it emerges from the lair, permanently rigid, hard, and unaffected by time or by exposure to the elements. Some glass is further treated to add even more functions to its design and shape. Glare reduction and additional obscurity can be accomplished by acid etching. If transparency is desired along with protection, as in the case of some fire retardant panels, the glass is polished in these polishing mills and the glass emerges with all the luster of fine plate glass. Mississippi glass is manufactured in the modern factories, such as this one, in St. Louis. Other factories are located at Floreth, Pennsylvania, 
and Fullerton, California. In this experimental school building, built by Mississippi Glass, continuing research on daylighting is carried out. The building is oriented to the four cardinal points of the compass with movable partitions inside. Thus, a great variety of field conditions can be set up. And by changing the fenestration, precise investigations can be accomplished. Here in miniature, but scientifically accurate, we can duplicate lighting conditions in a typical room. With clear glass and our standardized amount of light in a given elevation, we can show the effect of various figured patterns. This particular sample has been glare reduced on the pattern side. This glass has a light transmittance of some 15% less than the untreated sample, or a total of about 74%. We normally recommend glazing the glare-reduced surface toward the interior of the building so that it will be less susceptible to dirt and even more accessible for cleaning. Here in life-size scale, we'd like to show the results of glazing this experimental schoolroom with different glasses. With time-lapse photography, we're about to see a comparison between Petticore glare reduced on the bottom half of the screen and clear glass on the top. These pictures were taken one frame every 20 seconds from sunrise to sunset with full sunlight all day. You will notice that a vision strip has been retained in the room glazed with Petticore to avoid any possible feeling of claustrophobia as is recommended in this type of installation.
Now we will see the same experiment repeated, only Luxite Coolite has been placed in the frames instead of Pentacor. To give a better understanding of what we have just seen, we will show the spectral energy curve of sunlight. It extends from wavelengths as short as 290 millimicrons to 2100 millimicrons. From about 290 millimicrons to about 380 is the ultraviolet band. Visible light extends up to 760 millimicrons and in the rest of the band is infrared or heat producing waves. To reproduce this in the laboratory exactly is almost impossible. By taking an incandescent lamp, we get a curve like this. By adding a filter between the light bulb and our measuring device, we get a fairly accurate resultant as seen here. This instrument is a radiometer the speed at which it revolves is a visual indication of the amount of heat that is being transmitted to it. You will notice that the speed of the meter to unfiltered light is considerably slowed when the filter is added. This is caused by the removal of the high energy emission of the light bulb that is greater than is found in normal sunlight. Now, one eighth inch flint clear glass is added to the path of the light and there will be noticeable slowing down due to the transmission loss, however slight. Now, we replace the clear glass with coolite, and the meter slows almost to a standstill, showing the effect of the coolite heat-absorbing glass. Now, let's translate this information into terms of heat transmission into a building. With clear glass in the fenestration, we see 100% arriving at the window. Of this, 9 and 6 tenths percent is reflected. As the glass absorbs some of the heat and comes up to temperature, it re-radiates some of this heat. 2 and 8 tenths percent goes back outside, and a like amount goes into the building. 84 and 8 tenths percent is transmitted directly. Thus, 12 and 4 tenths percent is excluded from the building, and 87 and 6 tenths percent enters through this 1 8 inch flint glass. By substituting 1 8 inch coolite, we again see 100 percent arriving at the window with the same 9 and 6 tenths percent reflected from the surface of the glass. The coolite absorbs and re-radiates a much larger amount of the heat, and 29 and 2 tenths percent is re-radiated both inside and out but only 32% is transmitted. Thus, 38 and 8 tenths percent is excluded from the building, and 61 and 2 tenths percent enters. By increasing the thickness of the coolite, 35 and 2 tenths percent is re-radiated, and only 20% transmitted, so that 44 and 8 tenths percent is excluded 
and the 55 and 2 tenths percent enters the building. The use of Coolite in an air conditioned building will reduce the load on the air conditioning equipment due to the fenestration by approximately one half. Technical information on all the glasses currently manufactured is available from Mississippi Glass representatives. Schools have changed considerably over the past few years and glass is playing a big important role in these changes. Whether it's a small rural school or a big city high school, you will find glass playing a big role in the average classroom as well as in the specialized teaching rooms such as the sewing and home economics room and the shops. When this boy graduates and goes out into industry, he will find that the leading industrialists realize that good daylighting pays off in the design of their new buildings or the remodeling of older buildings. The properties of light diffusion and glare reduction from the popper glasses can result in rooms being properly daylighted far from windows with small skylight areas covering large floor areas with shadowless illumination eliminating eye strain on the part of the workers. This results in greater productive effort and less cost. Here are some typical glass patterns available for industrial and school use. No matter where it occurs, fire is a serious thing. Since wired glass was introduced over 60 years ago, it has saved countless millions of dollars worth of property and many, many lives. Wired glass has probably done more to prevent the spread of fire than any other single material. Over the years, wired glass has proved itself as a fire retardant to such an extent that the underwriter's laboratory no longer find it necessary to test it. However, it is mandatory that wired glass be used in fire doors and windows. By means of this graph, we see that in order to complete the test, the sash and glass are tested in an oven that gradually raises the temperature until at 45 minutes, the internal temperature is 1,640 degrees, well above the melting point of aluminum. This is the underwriter's official film of the fire test of a unit designed and constructed by the Overly Manufacturing Company. 
The test assembly consists of a pair of hollow metal doors, a steel frame, a four foot high transom, and side lights six inches wide on the left and 30 inches wide on the right. The overall size of the test model was determined by the size limitations of the furnace. In order to obtain the widest possible side lights, only four units were used, which also permitted the testing of unequal stresses of the frame. The unusual arrangement of both horizontal and vertical mullion bars is to determine the difference in deflection in regards to position. The assembly has been mounted in a masonry wall and placed in a controlled temperature furnace, which will duplicate the conditions of a burning building. At this point in the test, the doors have been burned considerably and the paint is charred, as is the mullion of the transom. In spite of the cracked glass and the obvious deflection in the doors and frames, the unit is very efficiently doing the job it was designed to do. At the end of the successful 60-minute test, the entire unit, still intact in the masonry wall, is taken from the furnace for the hose stream test. Under the test requirements, a stream of water with pressure of 30 pounds per square inch will be applied for 71 seconds, a figure based on an underwriter lab's formula, which relates the area of the unit to the length of the test. The partial dislodging of the glass in the lower left light of the glass door and the two lower lights of the side light is from the tremendous hose stream pressure. This breakage is allowable and expected. And as long as the entire glass unit is not knocked out, it in no way detracts from the success of the test, nor the use of the assembly as protection against fire and smoke. Measurements made at the completion of the test show no difference in the degree of deflection of the horizontal and vertical deflection of the mullion bars. It is apparent that their length is the determining factor rather than the position in which they are placed. The assembly used in this test was designed to pass hundreds of students through in normal schools use, as well as to ensure passage of a hospital bed with an attendant on either side. Wired glass is made in two patterns of wire and in a wide variety of surface textures. The wire is inserted into the molten glass. The resulting glass is completely fused around the wire. The introduction of diamond-shaped welded wire netting has removed the objection to the chicken wire appearance of wire glass. Mississippi Glass developed this new and modern design at the request of the architectural and engineering professions, and it meets the same standards as the woven wire mesh. Wired glass can be used for decoration as well as for utility, and it is being used more and more in the modern homes and buildings of today. If you would like to have more detailed technical information on the use of glass in homes, schools, or factories, contact the Mississippi Glass Company or your local supplier. <laughs>